Hey everyone, it's me, Doomlink, and welcome to a hopefully short and concise video regarding the Monster Underworld Iceborne, uh, I guess, I don't want to call it a reveal trailer, we already knew that Iceborne was coming, it's just we didn't really know much about it. But we've now been given a cinematic trailer which details a lot more about the Iceborne expansion, and I can say that I'm extremely um, unexcited, and I'm going to explain why. Um, to start with, it's Monster Hunter World. It's taken them around 15 months to give us any sort of content expansion. Uh, what we're seeing here should have been in the works in a big way by the time the game released to us. And then it should have been able to drop as full content within the first six months as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Capcom has been laying back, allowing their pockets to fill up with cash while they give us something 15 months down the line which, I suppose, the way I looked at it when I first saw the actual location where we're going to be hunting in, it's, you know, this snowy location, and because it's something so different from what we've been seeing for so long in Monster Hunter World, it actually looks like something special. So basically, Capcom has created an environment where we can sit here and look at an ice location and think, oh, this is so special, yet Capcom's been making ice areas since 2006 in every single one of its Monster Hunter games except for this one. So it's really interesting that they can actually create an environment where that's special. Oh, yay, I can finally drink hot drinks. Awesome. It was a little bit awkward that you had cool drinks but not hot drinks in the game. It's like, oh, it's almost as if there's content missing in this game. Whether or not this was actually intended on their part, obviously milking everyone for their money is a good way to actually uh, make money, but I don't know if that was actually what they were going for. I think when it comes to Monster Underworld, um, Capcom were phenomenally incompetent when it came to actually giving us the content for the game. And keep in mind, any of you who are actually, you know, considerable fans of Monster Hunter, I'm not going to sit here and debate about whether or not it's a good Monster Hunter game and whether or not I'm being fair, because that is a really long discussion and I'm not here to convince anyone whether or not it's a good game. I'm just telling you how I feel about it. Oh yeah, and another thing before we start, look at this frickin' promotional image. Don't you think it's really funny? You'll see it in the trailer as well, but they've been really building up the fact that it's cold by having the hunter wear this very wintry sort of attire, something that you would actually want to be wearing if you were knee-deep in snow. But as you can see, the guy on the right side here, who we will be seeing in the trailer, there's a little bit of a stark contrast between him and the girl next to him, don't you think? I mean, we're either going to be dressing for the winter or we're not. Make up your mind, please, Capcom. Now, the first monster that was actually revealed in this trailer, which is something that I can only describe as some sort of cross between a Durambros and an Antica, uh, whether you want to call it Great Antica, or the offspring of a Durambaros and an Antica who got a little bit wild one night, uh, that's up to you. But what I can tell you is that it's kind of interesting to fight a Durambaros-esque creature, but my first impressions of seeing a monster with big antlers in an ice area was, oh well that's original. That was my first impression. Now the next monster that we get to see is a Piscine Wyvern. Now this is extremely interesting because I would say that it takes a lot of balls for Capcom to be so desperate to reuse previous skeletons that they're actually going to bring a Piscine Wyvern into a snow location. We're not talking about Leviathans, they've done that with Agnaktor before by giving him a subspecies, that was kind of cool. But this is not cool. Why is that? It's because we've been spending the last 15 months fighting the worst Piscine Wyvern in the entirety of the Monster Hunter series whenever we want to get a water weapon. Those water weapons, by the way, looking extremely generic and uninteresting when it comes to their design, for the most part. So, it's really great to see another Piscine Wyvern. I'm really excited, guys. Not only is Lavazioth kind of bad and uninspired in this game, but he's also got a brother who happens to be the most uninspired monster in the entire series, apart from maybe Cephadrome? And to be honest, when you're comparing one of your Monster Underworld monsters to Cephadrome, I think something might be wrong with what you're doing here, but anyway, so we've got a Piscine Wyvern, that's great. Capcom really doesn't seem to be too concerned about insulting the intelligence of its player base, so we've basically been given something that we should have had more or less from the beginning, and if not from the beginning, then not 15 months down the line. Uh, in other words, an ice location, and as well as that, we've been given pretty much the same monster that we've been fighting for a very long time. 
I do understand that just because it has the same skeleton, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be the exact same monster, but I think the sheer number of times we've fought Lavazioths and Duratoduses in the time since this game has launched, I think that is enough to make it kind of obvious that we probably don't want to fight any more of the same kind of frickin' monster anymore. That's why I'm A-OK -okay with the Great Antiquer, as I'm calling him. That's perfectly fine by me. Now the next monster that we are shown is the Naruga Kuruga, who is given the English name Naga Kuga, and was given that English name back in Monster Hunter Freedom Unite. It's been more than 10 years since Monster Hunter Freedom Unite came out in Japanese as Monster Hunter Portable 2nd G, and here we are getting Naga Kuga in Monster Hunter World. I do think that this is a good addition to the game. Uh, Naga Kuga should have appeared before this point, and to be honest, that's pretty much... It. I'm very boring when it comes to World. Pretty much everything that I say when it comes to world is, oh, well, this should have been in the game a long time ago. <laughs> so, um, yeah, sorry to be boring. They should have spent another year working on the game, uh, actually fixed the Leviathan skeleton, and maybe come out with a good game instead of what they came out with. But anyway, so what we do have is a Nagakuga in the Ancient Forest location. Now, I'm not going to complain about the fact that he's in the Ancient Forest, even though the Ancient Forest is probably one of my least favourite locations in the entirety of the Monster Hunter series, which is not really a strange thing for me to be saying in the context of Monster Hunter World. There are a lot of things that I absolutely despise about this game, but look, to be honest, asking them to make a map just for Nagakuga would be a little bit of a tall order for the Capcom that has been coming out with the world content that we've been seeing thus far, so I'm just going to leave them alone. But I suppose one thing that I can say is that Capcom did a good job not needing to make a new location for Nagakuga. I do agree that the Ancient Forest is definitely suitable for Nagakuga. It's just unfortunate that it makes me physically ill to think about hunting in the Ancient Forest any more than I already have, so I'm probably not going to be fighting Nagakuga very much in this game. Now the last thing that we are shown in this trailer, which kind of astounded me, because I realised, I didn't actually think about it before this point, it's really quite funny, but I didn't actually realise how much Capcom had completely dropped the ball and let it roll down the hill into the lake. I had no idea until I saw this. See this dragon that we're looking at here? It's, it's rather similar to another dragon that we've seen before, don't you think? His name's Kushala Dayora, and he's kind of an ice element elder dragon, don't you think? Yeah, I think he's an ice element elder dragon as well. Now, don't you think that it's a little bit of a ball dropper to actually bring this strange elder dragon, who looks really nondescript, like this is probably the most unexciting elder dragon I've ever seen visually. Now, this dragon, this elder dragon, I would assume it is, because generally when it comes to the Monster Hunter cinematics, they show the elder dragon last of all. But this is so unexciting. I suppose he's more or less a specifically frost-focused variant to the Deora, because as we know, Kushala is mostly, you know, he's a windy boy. He sort of breathes uh, wind around and you've got all this windy stuff going on. But they've instead brought a Kushala Deora reskin who instead shoots ice and ice tornadoes, I would imagine. Now, how do I feel about this? Well, unfortunately, it takes... because... Capcom have set the bar so fucking low, okay, when it comes to getting new content, because the mere act of getting new content out to people right now is enough of a thumbs up on its own. If the content is somewhat lacking, it's okay, because, hey, it's new content in Monster Underworld. It's what we need. However, I cannot help but look at a monster like this and go, Capcom... Can you please maybe try a little bit? Please, a little bit, okay? And the reason why I say this is because these sorts of monsters should not be expansion monsters. Expansion monsters should be new and exciting and completely different to what we've been fighting before as far as I'm concerned. Because when you have an expansion scenario, what you want is something new. I have no problem with a Monster Hunter game having monsters that are similar to each other. That is extremely common. But if we've got this scenario where we've had limited content for a very long period of time, and that content is quite questionable in terms of its quality, to be honest, and then we get new content, finally, in a big way, 
and half of it is stuff we've already fought before. In my opinion, that's a bit of an insult. And yes, because Capcom have decided to take this route, it's not really something that can be helped on their end. They made a decision to have their content be expanded in this way, and so they've basically shot themselves in the foot before they've done anything, because yes, it's Capcom. They're not going to be coming out with anything too incredibly exciting when it comes to the monsters, okay? There's going to be some that are very similar to others, and to have the final monster of this cinematic trailer be effectively Kushala Deora, but ice, and looking a little bit less metallic, is not very exciting to me, okay? And it shouldn't be exciting to anyone. Please stop being excited about Monster Hunter World, and actually get some kind of clue, please, because the reason why World is succeeding right now is because all of the people playing it, for the most part, haven't played a Monster Hunter game before. They have no point of reference, and therefore they are not capable of being able to put World in the context of the Monster Hunter series, and therefore realise how fucking terrible it is. What's astounding is that some people who haven't even put the game in the context of the Monster Hunter series to give it a sense of how good it is, they've already come to the conclusion that, hey, it kind of sucks that the vast majority of stuff that's being passed off as expansion content at this point in the game's lifespan is so lacklustre. You know, this stuff is A-OK, -okay. it's great, but it should have been in the fucking game before. Not as part of expansion content. Not part of something that we should be excited about. Oh, I can drink hot drinks. I've got an ice area. Hey, that's supposed to be a given when it comes to a Monster Hunter game. And now it's being given to us as if it's something special. Oh, it's snowy because it's different from what we've been looking at for 15 months. Capcom have got our balls in a real strong grip right now. And I'm starting to consider whether or not I should be voting with my wallet when it comes to this stuff. Maybe if I fundamentally disagree with it, I should just not buy it. We'll see. I really don't know how it's working. I haven't played World for a long time. When I do play it, I last for a few days and then I'm like, I can't play this anymore. I tried and I couldn't do it again. And that's happened many, many times. So maybe I should just not buy the frickin' expansion. We'll see. I don't know what I'm going to do. And uh, just to address the last thing that sort of appears here, um, I don't know what the hell this is. Like, <laughs> What is this? I don't know. But guess what? I don't give a fuck. I couldn't give a shit. Fuck this game.